Rabotai, today we want to continue in the Sefer Eftachab Mashalpi by the Chavetz Chaim, where he brings down over here the importance, or the most important thing that a person has in his life, is Zman, is the time. And unfortunately, a lot of us don't use this time that a person was given in this world, but we abuse it. We do not know what we're doing with our time. If I ask anyone today, what did you do at X, Y, and Z time? You will tell me I was on my phone, or I was wasting, or I was watching, or I was doing everything, but I wasn't serving Hashem. Rabotai, because unfortunately this is what it has come down to. We know the concept that a third of a person's life, he sleeps, he eats, he works, but today it is safe to say that majority of our lives we have given in to the technology. Not if it's for work, etc. I'm speaking about wasting time on it. Now, we have to realize, it's not minutes or seconds or hours that you are wasting on it. But if you look in the whole year, how much time you wasted in that year. If you take all the hours, it's not days, it's actually months of months that you actually killed where you could have been serving. HaKadosh Baruch meaning you could have been doing mitzvot, saying Tehillim, learning Chumash, learning Torah, whatever it might have been. Now, we want to see over here today that if we so. If we're so uh, concerned about the time, we know that we have a lot of distractions in this world. When I say distractions, I'm not speaking about only what goes around us, but our biggest distractions, Rabotai, are sometimes could be the parents, the in-laws, or even sometimes the wives themselves. When a husband wants to go to learn, all of a sudden she wants him to be home. It's called date night. Every day, 365 days in a year, she wants to have a date night with him. I, I learned that in the word date night. <laughs> I got to use it. Anyway, Rabotai, we need to realize these date nights will cost you if you do not schedule your learning Torah the proper way it's supposed to be. And I'll show you why over here. That we need to come to a realization that when you have these distractions, not only the outside world, but also from the family, from the inner circle, because they have the most uh, influence on us. This one called Yanishua, this one has a Shabbat Brachot, this one has a wedding. Rabotai, the Itahara knows when he should send you away. As long as you're not learning Rabotai, you could be doing whatever you want. Because the Itahara knows where all the success comes from. It's from learning Torah, where all the problems come from, it's from everything else. That's why if you pay attention, right, if you look into the Chumash, it says that the Malach, the angel, fought with Yaakov. Esau's angel fought with Yaakov Avinu. And they say it was Malach Hamav, etc. But I ask you a question. What happened to Avram Avinu? Why did, why wasn't there a bad angel fighting with Avram Avinu? What happened to Yitzchak Avinu? Why no angel, what, Yaakov had all of a sudden, Yaakov, he, Tadik, Shubat, Tzadik, what? He, but Avram was not. He was anything less than Yaakov, Chasr, Shalom. Anything, he's the one who began the whole cycle of Yiddish, kind of being Jewish, he's the one who opened the whole, uh, front line for us. So we have to understand, that the Yetzirah knows that Aram Avinu was everything about chesed, kindness. Yitzchak Avinu was everything about prayer, davening. However, when it came to Yaakov Avinu, it was everything about Torah. The Yetzirah said, Abraham, do all the chesed you want. I'm like, I don't want to bother you. Continue to, I'm not, it's not bad. You got to do chesed. Continue doing chesed. Yitzchak, you want to pray, daven all day as long as you want. Yaakov, you know, you learn Torah, this is the secret to everything about Torah. Torah is the secret to everything. He said, you know something, that I can allow you to do. That's why he fought with Yaakov, because he had Torah. Now, I'm not telling you not to do chesed, I'm not telling you not to daven. I'm telling you to do all for you, okay? Put it to you like that. Now, we want to just try to come around this, and we want to try to understand, how does one go about trying to ignore all the interruptions that try to refrain him from doing Avodah Hashem, from learning Torah, or diving, or, or, or whatever it's going to be. How does one, how does one close his ears to the naysayers, like they say? So the Chavaz Chaim over here in page Sam Mechtet, he brings down here in Otla Mechtet, he says, coming back to this world after a person already dies. He says, the Chavaz Chaim says like this, V'shamati ma'aseh al givir echad, he said, I heard a story on a very rich guy who was a very big businessman who left from the outside world, meaning from all the vanities of this world, 
And he sat and he learned Torah day and night. Can you imagine Rabotai having millions if not billions of dollars coming in day in day out? You're, I'm not again Rabotai, I'm just reading for you over here as always. Like I always say Rabotai, when you listen to something, do not apply everything. Please speak to your rabbi, don't stop dropping all you're doing. People gotta work. I just gotta say this because a lot of people think, oh that's it, I'm not working no more. People gotta work. People got, got, have to do his shadu, they have to do their, they have to exert their effort in work. Of you were just trying to bring out a point on how does one close out everybody in order to be able to succeed in Avodah Hashem. That's all. Rabotai, again, I always say this, from stories we do not make halachot, from Agada we do not make halachot, from Chumash we do not make Rabotai. There is a Shukhun Ark for it, Rishonim, Achronim. It's not simple, you just go, you listen to Musash, that's it, you change overnight. No, no, Rabotai, always speak to your rabbi who knows you personally. In any event, one more time, I should have said that introduction beforehand, but one more time. V'shamati ma'aseh al-gvir echadu ba'al ha'asikim gadol, sufresh ha'asmol gamil me'ahle wa ma'aseh, la'asok ba'turat Hashem yimam al-ayla. He says, I heard a story on a very rich person who was a very big businessman that he completely separated himself from the vanities of this world in order to be able to sit and learn Hashem Torah Day in and day, and day out. The Chavru Alav Echav Ubeit Aviv and his brothers and uh, his father's house, everybody gathered upon him. Van Shepite, also the household of his members, Lahak Zirol in Yinu Harishon. They wanted to speak to him that he should come back to his original position, meaning, why did you leave this business uh, success that you had and you went and sit and learned Torah? Why did you do that? They wanted him to go back out to work. And he did not pay attention to them whatsoever. After some time, the people, they give up hope on him. How much can we speak? The wife, everybody gave up hope on him. It's like speaking to the wall. The people that knew him from before, when he was a very big businessman, they asked him a question. How was he able to do it that he ignored everybody, all the family members? Everybody telling you, you're wasting your time, how are you going to make your money? What's going to be with your children? Who's going to come to your khatuna, right? To your wedding, to your bermits, etc. After you die, who's going to come? That's all people worry about, Rabotai. So they asked him, how did you ignore everybody? He said to them like this, I contemplated what our rabbi said. The Torah is not going to be fulfilled. It's not going to say with one that does not kill himself over the Torah. And he says the explanation over here is Some rabbis will learn here as, as if he already died. What does that mean? And that is Ba'atzmo, himself. Ki ilu kvar gamar ko asakam shayat b'kocho v'gam gamar v'hemet y'me chayav. He says it's as if he finished all his business dealings that he ever had in the world. And with that he died. V'hi evihu l'din l'fnei melech malchem l'ochem v'kash baruchu. And now they brought him before Hashem, may he be blessed. Ako ha'inyanim shikla v'hemet zmano l'hevel v'arik. They brought him, they brought him to judgment before Kadosh Baruch Hu on all the matters that wasted his time in this world with all the vanities, vanity, vanities and emptiness. He had an unfavorable judgment above. Rabotai, who are we speaking about? We are speaking about a person who was a very big businessman or a millionaire, billionaire, who knows how rich this guy was. And he left everything, and how did he do it? Because he contemplated to himself that this is what our rabbis say, that when they're going to bring you up over there to Shammai, they're going to ask you, what did you waste your life on? And they're going to see that you wasted your life on vanity and emptiness. They're going to understand, Rabotai, that you weren't preparing yourself for Olam Abba. All your life, what you were doing, you were only preparing for Olam Abba. How big my house is going to be, how best of the car I'm going to drive, where I'm going to go my next vacation. Yeah, when, did, when was the last time you said that and you, talk, and you thought about what happens if you die tomorrow? What's going to be with Olam Abba? Did you think about that? No, you didn't because you believe you're going to live 600 years. But that's the problem. 
And so he says over here, V'yatzecha Yabedin Shalmalo, when he came out, he was chayav. They said he, it was an unfavorable judgment for him. V'hu tzo'ek, now he started screaming in Shomayim. Oy li vay li al ro'a ma'asai wa al ro'a in anyai. Woe to me, woe to me on all my bad deeds and on all the bad things that I've ever done in my life. And he says now like this, V'ilu b'toch kach, and let's say if this was the whole situation, Hirshu shi'ire tekev le'olam hazeh, Let's say in the bed in Somala, Abdin, in the heavenly court, with all this, they would have told him, you know something? We're allowing you to go back down to this world to do Teshuvah. Would you do Teshuvah or not? For sure, I wouldn't be even lazy for one moment from this, from not doing Teshuvah. For sure, I would do Teshuvah. And I wouldn't even pay attention to what my family members or people around me have to tell me about Avodah Hashem, because he says, I would know that he only has a limited time to go before he goes back. So he would come down over here and do the best he can before he would go up there. So now the Chavaz Chaim says, V'im ken and if so, Yachshov ha'adam ba'atzmo, let a person contemplate himself. L'fi avonotav she'hayar ha'uy lo lamud mikwar. According to the verse that a person really had to die from before. V'im achre ha'mavet. Let's say a person chasosom had a virus that he already had to die for, for them from before. Rabotai, let's say basically like the person, you, uh, that, you're no longer here, Lola, in Rabotai. Let's put it like this. V'im achre ha'mavet haya kadosh baruch hu mitnahegi mo bechesed gadol. And after the, when this person died, kadosh baruch hu would behave with him with great kindness. V'haya noten lo rishud she'ech zor b'tushuwa. And he would tell me, you know something, I give you permission to go back and do repentance. For sure you wouldn't be lazy, you wouldn't loosen yourself even for one moment in doing Teshuvo. Im Ken, Rabotai, listen to this carefully, if so. What damage is HaKadosh Baruch Hu doing to you now? That you're not there, you're here. So Hashem is prolonging your life in order to give you the opportunity to do Teshuvah. Rabotai, bevadai tzarich lezarez. For sure, a person needs to be quick. He has to be, he has to quicken himself. Bechol kechotav in all his strength. Lasot Teshuvah akol amunotav. If a person is still alive, you need to do Teshuvah. Wake up before it is too late. And you need to learn the Torah constantly. And at the very least, you should have time set for learning Torah. You shouldn't pay attention to no one at all. If anybody wants to take you away from doing the proper Teshuvah, from going in the Word of Hashem, from learning Torah, Rabotai, ignore them. Do you know why? Like we saw over here right now. If a Kadosh Baruch was going to take a person away now and then return your life, how grateful you would you would you have been? How much more so that Hashem didn't take your life? He's giving you long life. He's continuing giving you life as we speak. How much more so we have to be grateful to a Kadosh Baruch that he didn't do anything and he wants us to do to Shuvah Rabotai. So why are we lazy? Why aren't we doing our job in this world for what we came down over here? And this is the problem of Rabotai because of the relatives. I don't want to start saying wife, mother in law. I don't care who, 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 who it is. We all know Rabotai when it comes to building a building. I just want to put it to you like this. I want to conclude. When it comes to building a building, if you have a contractor, correct? He wants to build a house. So he goes to his wife, says, Baby, we got to build, you know, a six family house, whatever, six story house. And the foundation is going to cost us $3 million alone because it has to be able to hold the six-story floor house. Uh, so many millions. So the wife says, you want to spend so much on that? Why are you putting so much money into the foundation? Put half a million to the foundation and the other millions put into the house, make it beautiful. I'm asking you a question. This person has built a house, this contractor, Tell me, would he listen to his wife? In her dreams, he would listen. Never in the low, and never in the world, he would listen to her. Why? Because he knows what prashat of building a foundation which is weak for five hundred thousand dollars in a six-story house 
that we know that it's going to collapse after you finish building it. That you're not going to listen. This you understand. But why when it comes to your olam haba, you understand that somebody else or your wife or family members are able to deter you from doing it. That you understand. By this you have no problem. Rabotai, from over here I want to just put it like this. From over here you see what your foundation in the olam haba is going to be like. If you allow people to ruin your foundation in olam haba, and you think you're doing a mitzvah here, you're doing a mitzvah here, Rabotai is like taking a cup and doing a mitzvah where there's no family, there's a hole in the bottom. I'm not telling you that you're not going to get reward, you're going to get rewarded. But at the same time, Rabotai, you want to try to build your Olam Haba <clears throat> as big, as great as possible. And this is the job of the Yetzar, and that's to refrain you from doing it. Now, I'm not I'm telling you, Rabotai, that you have to start fighting with people. I'm not telling you. All I'm just trying to tell you is that a person, like over here we see the Chavetz Chaim is bringing down, that a person has to know how to close themselves to the outside world. Sometimes, Rabotai, when you are at war with the Yitzhahara, sometimes you have to see the opponent in front of you, which is the Yitzhahara, and not the people, not the, uh, what do you call the side, the uh, onlookers, the citizens. But what are we doing? We ignore the enemy, and we focus on the citizens, on the people that are on the sides who are looking at us. And this is why, if the enemy is in front, and the person is over here, and we're looking left and right, and we're never focused on our enemy, Rabotai, this is why people will fall. This is why the Yitzhah is able to catch you, to make you to do a virus, and make you fall in this world. Rabotai, Be'ezrat Hashem, may Hashem give us the koach, to be able to do the proper teshuva, Rabotai. Mishanichas Adar, Marvin, Besimcha, when Adar comes in, you have to increase in Simcha. Which kind of Simcha? Simcha Shal Mitzvah. Happiness with Mitzvot Rabotai. The only happiness that, will, that a person will have in this world, is by doing mitzvot, chesed, and learning Torah. If it's in the word Hashem, Rabotai, if you're even helping people, that's chesed. When it comes to the word Hashem, you will be happy. Rabotai, I put it to you like this. When you do mitzvot the proper way, when you serve Hashem the proper way, when you learn Torah the proper way, that gives you energy throughout your life that you are able to continue to function better with your wife, better with your children. You're a different being altogether. Be'ezrat Hashem, Rabotai, may HaKadosh Baruch make this month a month of happiness, Be'ezrat Hashem, all those that want children, may they have children. All those that need to get married, may they get married. All those that want real Shalom Bayit, Rabotai, the real Shalom Bayit is, send your husband to learn, don't keep him too long at the house. Send your husband to learn, and then he's not going to be nagging you, then you're going to have real Shalom Bayit. Have a date night, maybe Saturday, Sunday, whatever the date might be, meaning Saturday night. Rabotai, love you all, have a great Shabbat. Baruch Adonai, Amen, Amen.